this is your third Photoshop tutorial. This one we'll be looking at contrast and, and also adding the, the same adjustments that were covered in the last um, two tutorials into one image. So this time I want you to open the image called Adjustment 3. And you'll open the image from Camera Raw. Now this image is a lot, has a lot more going on in it than the last two images. So with this one, again, we have to determine what we want to do and bring out in the photo and what we might want to hide. So in this image, we've got a lot of lights and, and quite a bit of shadowy darkness. So we want, to, we want to increase that contrast. Contrast means the difference between the light and the dark parts of the image. So we want to increase that contrast to make the bright parts stand out more and the dark parts um, become a little bit more dull. So let's, we could do a contrast layer by going brightness and contrast, same as we did before, and this time change the contrast instead of the brightness. Now the problem with doing that is, it's not really a natural way of doing it. So once you've made a layer, if you're not happy with the layer, you can always go Control Z, um, but when you've made 30, 40 different layers, um, and it's too hard to go, because once you go Control Z or Edit Undo um, continuously, you're going to lose all the other work that you've done. So one easy way to do it is just to drag your layer to the bin down here and delete it. And then, so if you had five, ten layers backed up there, you could just choose the one layer that you don't want to continue with and drag that to the bin and get rid of it. So another way to do it is with a curves layer. So we used this one before for brightness, but what I didn't tell you is this part here is the highlights, this part here of the graph is the highlights, and this part here of the graph is the shadows. So if you drag the highlights and bring it up, and drag the shadows and bring it down to create a curve that looks like an S, then that increases the contrast because you've made the light parts brighter and the dark parts darker. So now when I click on that image, you can see how it's added a bit of contrast to the image. Now, one way to, ch if you if you look at that and you think, I like it, but it's, made, it's too strong, you can either go back in here and readjust your curve, or you can change the opacity of that layer, which means that you're just changing how much of that layer you've, that you've just made can be seen through. So if I just make it really light, then again, you can see it's only making a very miniature change to the image. So I might put that up to say 50%. So you can see it's only making a slight change, which is what we want to make. Always just make small, slight changes. Even if you have 10 layers, um, each one only makes a small change. That's, that's the ideal goal. So we've made a curves layer to increase the contrast. Now we might say, um, okay, when we add contrast, we want to make the, the lights, say we want to make these lights here really bright. Now, um, if you add a curves layer like we just did, you're changing the whole image. So how can we do it so that we're just choosing part of the image? Um, So we can go color balance. So if we add a color balance layer, hang on. Okay. Where's luminosity? Actually, let's not do a color balance layer. Let's do a hue and saturation layer. So with a hue and saturation layer, we can change saturation of all the colors in the image. Or we can come up here where it says master and change specific colors. So say we recognize this part of the here of the image is a yellowy sort of color, then we might find that if we change the yellows, there you go, we're affecting that part of the image. Now, saturation is not what you want to change. 
but lightness might have an effect. See how the lightness is. So I would maybe drag that lightness scale up a bit and the saturation a touch. And then let's see if that did much. So that was before I made that slight change, and that was after. So you can see it's, if you look here and here, you can see the sort of slight change that it's done. It's just sort of made those yellowy colors a little bit brighter and made it stand out a little bit more. So again, that was a hue and saturation layer. And again, if I wanted to change, say, the blues in the sky, say I wanted to make this sky a lot darker, I could go blues, and then I could I could either change the hue of the blues, which will change the color, how um, like what sort of shade of that bluey purpley color it is. But say I want to leave it how it is, I could change the saturation, which changes how intense that color is. So say I want to make it a little bit grayer, get some of that purple out of the sky, and I want to make it darker. So lighter, darker. So now, when I turn that on and off, you can see I've made that sky a lot greyer, which takes the focus away from the sky and brings your eyes more towards this part of the image, the, um, the city, which is what you want. So now once you've made those changes, um, so I, I might just run through that again. So we started off here, we added a contrast layer, it was a curves layer, and we brought up the highlights, dragged down the shadows. That added a bit of contrast to the whole image. Next, we added a color balance layer. Did I use that color balance layer? It's up there. It's gone. I must have deleted one. Um, so I, I added a color balance layer. I'll re-add it now, so I don't know what this is about. Let's get rid of that one. So then we added a hue and saturation layer. I'll just add another one quickly. Um, where we wanted to brighten these yellows. So we go yellows, and we brought up the saturation a bit, and we brought up the brightness a little bit. So we had that curves layer, then we had the hue and saturation layer, which brightened the yellowy colors here. And then we had the hue and saturation layer, which made the blue colors less saturated and darker, which made the sky gray. So just, I might try and bring this one out a bit more. It looks a little bit unnatural, but for the sake of this editing task, I want you to make it look like that. So once you've done this, file export, now you should know by now, export as. So now we remember 6,000 pixels was too big. When we changed it to four um, inches last time, that was around 1,200 pixels. So when you click on that, it should make it automatically. Type in 1,200 and then when you click on the height one, it'll change it automatically um, to fit the scale. So make sure it's a JPEG. Export all. This time adjustments. Re-export and save, and you're done.